evening everyone uh i hope you guys uh, have a great uh, weekend ahead of you usually we uh, tune in every saturday but uh, we have made a very uh, very quick exception for vikas here so yeah thanks a lot for joining in on a friday evening wherever you are from uh, for those of you who don't know me i am afif i work here for product management as well as i take care of design community management at proapp and for for those of you who don't know proapp is a platform to learn all things design uh, we have so many bite sized content courses curated for you we have uh, design challenges we have so many things lined up like video master classes uh, job boards designer profiles and so much more so if you haven't had a chance to go through proapp this would be the best time to do that so all right uh, without wasting any further time let's just talk about what we are here for today so as some of you rightly guessed it's more or less about psychology behind design uh, and it is because psychology plays a very vital role uh, in more or less every sector uh, of the design industry uh, and specifically when it comes to design psychology uh, helps us to create the designs which will make users perform the actions that they are expected to such as let's say making a purchase or contacting a team and so on and so forth so yeah i mean i could also go on to speak a little about this but i think uh, i shouldn't do that to bikash here because he is probably the best person to speak about that so a little bit about him bikash is a designer turned product manager and uh, he is currently designated as the senior product manager at geo and uh, after more than 8 years of uh, design experience uh, bikash was given the opportunity to take up product management uh, which led to him now leading a team of associate product managers ux designers and so much more he is so passionate about uh, helping designers and young uh, aspirants learn and excel in their career that he could just not uh, say no to us uh, being here so vikash uh, i think that's enough of me and it's over to you cool thank you everyone for joining us today and i can see some of the familiar uh, names in the list as well um welcome and i believe couple of uh, things would be um similar uh, not don't, not everything would be similar but couple of things will be similar as to what i generally teach but uh, the psychology part would be a, a great addition for um you know all of you uh, let me start sharing my screen okay so i'll get started with it um so uh, you guys know about me i'm i'm a design lead and product manager at geo as afif said i've recently been moved into senior product management as well but this is the channel through which you can connect me so this gamer whatever i'm going to talk about today are uh, my own views they are not related with my current or my previous organization okay so the topic right what are we going to talk about today the psychology behind design from my perspective design isn't complete without psychology without understanding the human you cannot solve their problem it is as simple as that you are solving a human's problem a human problem right so you need to understand human to solve their problem and how do you understand human is by understanding the psychology as a subject okay um, i'm going to talk about a couple of things here today uh, like you know um, I, i'll come to the agenda later so this i get I, i always start with this so that you know the audience who are who are with me can get clarity or just open up their mind as to how how big design is okay so according to you i'm looking at the chat now and people who has already been in my webinars earlier will know this answer who do you think is the greatest designer ever it is i'll just pause for 5 seconds and want to see your answers in the chat who do you think great great i'm getting answers yes the vinzi okay the the creator of mona lisa don norman okay good okay some have given the answer which i was looking for fantastic i i love this answer called user oh okay <laughs> god oh wow walter me <laughs> okay cool god yeah okay so yeah so from my perspective i believe the greatest designer ever 
I'm a bit spiritual. So it's, it's God himself. But if you're not spiritual, you can think about nature. Okay. I believe the God has created the entire earth or the entire environment in a such a way that every human you ask, right? Every, you go and ask every human, do you want to die? He will never say yes. Because they are loving the features which the God has given them. They are loving the experience the God has created for them. And that, that's what we have to bring in our product. That whenever our user use our product, they will, they will always say, no, I cannot get rid of this product. I will always use this product. Right? Look at, look at how the God or nature has created us. Our eyes, nose, ears, everything is so perfectly done that we just loved it. We don't want to, you know, we don't want to sacrifice this. We don't want to die. Okay. So become designer like this, who can define the entire experience so that the, your user will never want to get rid of your product. Okay. I hope this is, this has opened up your mind. Okay. So what are we going to talk today? First, we'll try to understand what really is design, right? And then we'll talk about there are a huge debate about uh, UI versus UX, UX versus UI, blah, blah, things. You know, there are a lot of confusion as well in, in newbies who are coming to uh, design and trying to understand what UX design is. And they get into this debate and, and wasting their time. So I'll, I'll end this debate today. And then we'll talk about uh, different design frameworks, which is being used. And then we'll talk about the psychology behind design. Okay. And then five, I'll talk about 10 crucial things uh, about humans, every designer should know. There are hundreds and hundreds of things which every designer should know, but I will get started with just two. I'll give you, sorry, I'll give you 10 of that, those so that you can you know, have a, a foundation and knowledge of that, and then you can build upon uh, all those knowledge. Okay, so let's, let's get started with what, what really is design. Okay, so what is design? Um, I love, I love uh, Halbert's quote on this. He said, uh, design is to devise courses of action aimed at changing existing situation into a preferred one. So what he's saying is uh, design is, is to devise the course of action. You know, you need to do certain things so that whatever currently you are experiencing can be turned into the preferred experience. So he's, he's, he's just kept, you know, making everything together. He's just saying everything, you know, you do to make it a preferred one, you're, you're designing. Okay, it's a great one. Next, he uh, Richard said design is conception and planning of artificial. He's differentiating everything which is nature nature built. It's naturally built, right? Everything which is being uh, built by human or whatever being built today, like the house, the laptops, the mobiles, everything which has been built are artificial. So design is creating those artificial. That means whatever has been created artificially, design is that. And then uh, Max Bill said, design, participate in the making of new culture from spoon to city. So he's, he's making, uh, he's saying that design involves in making smallest spoon to a biggest town or city as well. So design is vast, design is big. In this context, I also want to bring in Steve Jobs quote, which is with, where he says that design is not just how it looks or feels. Design is also about how it works. So, so designer job is not to just put lipstick on, on pig. Okay. So design is far bigger than that. Okay. Let's move ahead. Um, U, uh, UK Design Council also have given this great quote. It said, great design is about finding practical, real world solution to the biggest issue facing us today. Okay. And then they have, they have also said this design isn't just making things better. It's about making lives, community, and industries better. Cool. So let's end the debate of UI versus UX. Um, there's huge debate uh, online, social, in social media and everywhere, right? Let's just kill it. So first of all, they are not two different things. UI and UX are not separate, okay? And they are not equal even. They're not same, okay? This is how it is. So UX is the bigger picture. Under UX, we have visual design, which is also known as user interface design. We have information architecture. We have accessibility. We have interaction design. We have usability. We have research. 
so all this there are more there are more than other there are other elements as well um, i've just um, jotted down the six here it is combining everything is called user experience so you are uh, you're defining the experience of your user using your product in every touch point wherever the customer is touching you are making that experience better that is user experience and ui is one part where is your inter your user is interacting with the system okay so clear that up it is not two different things it is not similar as well ui is subset of ux cool let's move on now um um what is ux people say what is what exactly is ux so my answer for ux is ux is a process of defining or designing the interaction between the user and the computer your computer is your um, website or it can be your mobile it can be your any product you are making okay so ux is the process of defining the or designing the the interaction between your your user and the and your product now how is that process is defined i said ux is a design process right what is that process that process is the framework by using frameworks such as uh, human centric design user centric design double diamond and design thinking we will be able to solve the most difficult problems uh, uh, in in the in the in the environment okay from the smallest uh, problem like you know changing the color of a button to biggest problem like poverty or uh, global warming okay so that process is 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 what is framework uh, they are they are similar okay there are there are a couple of frameworks which we have um, the human centric design wherein uh, human centric design is an approach to problem solving commonly used in design that develops solution to problems by involving the human perspective in every steps of the problem solving process so we are keeping human in the center of everything we do okay then again we have another uh, known as user centric again you see you can see user centric design is an iterative process in which designer focus on the users and their needs in each phase of the design process so at the center or at the core of these two framework is the humans right in both places you can see the humans are at the center of of the process so every design framework has have has have human at its core therefore it is important to learn how human think and behave if we have to design for human so this is very important to understand it is saying therefore it is important to learn how human think and behave if we have to design for human if you are designing for human you have to understand human and therefore psychology comes in okay the study the scientific study of the human mind it is not just related to human it is also animals so so the study of mind and behavior okay so this is how psychology is building up now we'll come to uh, the psychology behind design so when so there is a world there's the environment okay and there are humans inside this world okay and then humans have some problems or have some needs which they they have to fulfill or there is a problem which they need to solve right and then we have a solution for that problem okay so we have the environment the world and then inside world we have humans and then humans have problems and then that problems um, have solutions so design framework will help you solve or find a solution for the problems okay so design framework is capable of doing it but what about human and environment how do you understand human and environment okay we'll go ahead so great designers create designs taking into account the environment and the human also so great designers like you know i i am i'm a firm believer of uh, deitis deitros ram and i'll show you uh, in in coming slides also why i believe in so great designers like him always think about the environment the human factor the problem and then they they, they devise a solution or define a solution for that okay as i said i am a big follower of um, data strams these are his design look at this look at this design this has purely or or they have the the design 
have taken care of all the four aspects, the human, the environment, the problem, and then the solutions are this, right? This is 1950s, 1960s product. Look at the aesthetic part of it. Look at the beauty of it. Look at the usability of it, right? It's so perfectly done. And how is this possible? It's because that Dat Ram has taken care of all the four aspects or all the three aspects of it, right? He has taken care of the environment. He has taken care of the human factor as well. He has understand human. Okay, some of the design um, you you can you can relate with some of the Apple products. Like I'll show you with Apple. Boom, right? This is 1960 and this is 1990s or something. Okay, he's Johnny Ive. He's a chief design officer of Apple, and he has publicly said that he has he has he has been inspired by Dieter Ram's um, um, designs, and hence you can see. These are being correlated. You can see this design was changed into somehow uh, iPod, right? And then we have Mac and then the computers, uh, a calculator, sorry. Okay, so this is the influence they have. Now, what does Dieter Ram said? You cannot understand good design. If you don't understand people, design is made for people. You cannot understand good design if you don't understand people. Design is made for people. So even he is emphasizing that designers should understand human. Okay. And then how do we understand human and the environment is by understanding about or giving get, getting knowledge about psychology, right? The bottom part here can be done by design framework, right? Like design thinking or uh, double diamond or uh, human centric design, user centric design. This can be taken care of. But to take care of this too, you need to go on start studying about psychology or learn more about psychology. Cool. Okay, so there are uh, 10 crucial things about humans and environment every designer should know. Uh, these are 10 things which I have listed down here, which I'll take up individually and then we'll explain also as to how they are related to design. Okay, so the first one is, what do you see and what, okay, mind it, this is psychology, okay? Psychology is very weird when you, when you look at it from a different perspective. So when you, when you look at it from this perspective that whenever you're studying psychology, your brain is learning about himself. Okay, so it's so weird. <laughs> so keep in mind, keep in mind that, that um, it, it is a bit of crazy uh, when you start learning about psychology. Give, give it a, a different look whenever you're looking at it, okay? So first is what you see and what your brain understand are two different things. So whatever you are looking at and whatever your brain are, you know, decoding those information from the eyes are two different things, okay? So it is highly applicable in design. Whatever you are designing, you have to think about how our eyes see things and how our brain decode things, okay? If you see this, you can make sense. Okay, stop, walk, this now. Okay, I'm going to show you another image. You have to blink, look at it, and then I'll show you the, uh, the reason why I'm saying that what you see and what your brain understands is two different things. What do you see? The moment this, the, sec the second image comes uh, in the screen, you must have read uh, stop, peace, war, now. Right? That's how our eyes we'll try to decipher things so that our brain doesn't have a cognitive load. Okay. But then again, our brain so active said, no, no, something's wrong. That doesn't really make sense in the environment we live in. And then the brain will tell you, no, no, it should be stop war peace now. Then your brain is correcting itself. Your eye said it is stop peace war now, but your brain then again realized, no, no, it's not correct. Uh, it should be stop war and peace now. Okay. It's weird, <laughs> but this is how we, we do things, okay? Next up, we have a special part in our brain to recognize faces. So uh, we have special part. We have uh, a, a piece here, a, a system here in, 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 in our brain, uh, which are specially designed to, to recognize the faces, okay? Uh, in this, in this if, if, if suppose uh, just, 
uh, let's take an example that you are in this crowded market and suddenly you see somebody from your family you will recognize him or her even if there are hundreds of thousands of people in this in this crowd because that special part of your brain always look at images always look at faces they are not concentrating any anything, anything else they're just focusing on the faces okay so what is the design uh, uh, lesson here that when you have a design wherein you are showing human face that gets more attention because that that part of the brain gets activated and start looking at the face do i remember this do i know this face no does this does this face telling me something if if you if the eye movement is there to a product then your eyes will go to the product so this is the design language here that you know we we love any kind of design where there's a face even if you see big banners or big holdings in, in your roadside you will see big faces there and they they are uh, they are trying to you know grab your attention with using that big faces of of popular um people you know okay so this is um the second part third people scan screen based on the past experience and expectation now this is very important for all the ui designers and uh, what i'm trying to uh, make sense here is if i have used this website first time or tw twice or thrice and then if i go to some other website i will expect the same thing to happen there this is also known as conventions okay so if i browsing a website and the navigation at the top for example i'm browsing this website of quick and the navigation is at the top part and then we have the sign in here and then the buy button here and then i can scroll down right like this and i'm making i'm storing those info, uh, experiences in my brain i'm i'm storing all those expectation in my brain and when next time I'm, i i i visit any website i will look for those clues again i will always look at i look at uh, at the top part of the website to find the navigation to find the login button to find the sign up button and i will always do a scroll down many a time i have seen ui designers to make things crazy they put the scroller left to right now now here you are breaking the convention you should never do this okay be mindful about this because your user will always you know see things based on their past experience and expectation so they will always follow a convention okay so it's very important and and there is a beautiful thing here you can only break rules like convention rules and everything when you understand that rule so you understand the rule clearly as to why users go down what is that conventions and then if you want to break it then you can break it but you have to understand it better first and then you break it okay cool number 4 people believe that the things that are close together belongs to the same group now this has been given by one of the great um, uh, school of thought of psychology called gestalt principles there are 10 15 principles which you can easily get in 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 uh, while googling also or might might be you know you might have got while you are doing some courses you have been taught that but it is a school of thought gestalt principle is not just principles it's a school of thought in psychology okay it's it's more about how we perceive thing right how do we see things in this environment gestalt principles thought uh, you know um, studies that okay so people believe that the things that are close together belongs to the same group okay now look at this image very carefully i can i can i can see a lot of things together i can see this quote here and this text here so i i am i am say uh, what i'm assuming or what i'm perceiving is these two are together and hence this quote makes sense to me right likewise i can see this and i can see this two dots here and then i can my mind is saying that they are together and the the moment i realize okay they are together i can see if i click the below button here this image will get changed that's a perception i am making to myself because they are together right i can see this this are together and i can relate this down arrow also because they are together if i click this this text will get changed right i can also look at this and say okay they are together 
they are all social medias. I can also see this navigations are together. They are they form a single um, group. Okay, so this is this is psychology. People believe that things that are closer together belongs to same group. If you are UI designer, you might be working on grid system, right? So when we have a similar or or same group, we tend to give a, a or the white space tends to be reduced, right? And and those groups, um, different different groups, we tend to give bigger uh, space in between them so that they can be related as two different things. They can be um, they can be perceived as two different things. Okay, this was the fourth one. Number number five, very important. Okay, nine percent of men and zero point five percent of women are color blind. I'm not saying they're totally color blind, uh, but they are. They are they are blindness to certain color, certain shades of color. These numbers are basically for those uh, pattern of color blindness where they they have this red and green blindness. Okay, so there are nine percent of men and 0 0.1, 0.5 percent of women are colorblind. So whenever you're designing, you know you have to make your design accessible, inclusive, right? Don't just rely, don't just rely on on the color aspects of it. Okay, you also have to make make sure that this nine percent of men are, are not you know um, spared out. You have to take care of them as well whenever you're designing, and hence it is advisable that you use icons. Right, besides your, like, like has been done in this design that you use icon here, so that if if this is being differentiated with color, I can also look at this and I can say okay, this is different and this is different. Hence, we are using icons uh, in many places, right? If I have a problem with color, some kind of gray color, then I will have difficulties in uh, getting this color, right? Shades of this two thing. Icons makes my life easier if I'm a color blindness. Okay, so think about from that perspective as well. Six people will always make mistake. It is ingrained, or um, it, it is in fact that everyone will make mistake. What should we do as a designer? We should make our we should make our design error error prone to errors, error free. Okay, always always think from a perspective that okay user will definitely click here what will happen after this user will definitely close this uh, button or user will definitely close this modal in between filling up the form what should we do right you have to think three four steps ahead of your user and you always should uh, uh, make yourself clear that okay if user will come into this application they will make some errors where are those errors let's find it out and let's make our system error free. Now, you know, this error thing is very, very frustrating for a user. If you don't tackle it properly into in, in your design, your user will get frustrated. Though they knowingly closing the button or closing the modal or everything, but they still will be frustrated. They will, they will expect the system to take care of uh, themselves or take, take care of them. Okay, so you should always design your system or your design keeping in mind that people will always make mistake. Cool, seven, important, okay? Recognizing information is easier than recalling it. Okay, so if I ask you this question, what is the capital of France? It will take time, right? To go back to your information, find it out where France is in your brain, and then try to understand, try to relate France with Paris. Oh, might be you have Paris somewhere, you will try to relate. Okay, yes. So Paris, Paris, right? Okay, Paris, the capital of France, right? But if I ask you, is London the capital of England? Then you will be quick, you'll say yes. Because I'm not telling you to go back in your memory and try to find out those information. I am giving you related information. I'm just telling you London and England as well. And you can relate. Yes, they are together. So your brain will quickly make those answers. And how does we apply that in design? By giving hints, for example, by giving placeholders in your text field. 
you know, when you have a text field wherein you put your email ID, you said enter your email ID, that placeholder, that you can give to the users and they can be easily put in that detail quickly. This is one of the example where it recognizing, you know, it's giving a password hint. It's, it's like recognizing, it's telling uh, the user to recognize uh, the, the information which is related to this. Okay, we are not telling them to go back to memory again and try to recall that password. You should always have this also in your design. Okay. And then we you know what happened most of the time. It is your user will make mistake, but he, they will always blame the system. They'll say the system is not uh, super active. The system is not understanding us and they'll get frustrated and they will just close the application. Okay. So hence we should always do this. Okay. Number eight, people are usually bad at remembering things. It's a fact. It is very difficult for a human to remember things. Okay. How does we remember things? Okay. So I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll give you a glimpse about this also. So whenever you, you come in contact with a new information, right? A something new, we, which you never have been uh, in contact with first time in, in, in your life that you have come in contact with that, what will happen? Your brain will create a schema of it right somewhere in the brain you will create a schema see we're learning a b c d for the first time not the not the alphabet but i'm talking about a product or any kind of object okay so a b c d so your your brain will create a schema called a b c d okay and it will stay there for a couple of couple of days or a couple of hours might be okay it will stay there but if you don't rehearse if that doesn't comes to your brain again it will it will decay it will go away that's how we have been developed this is how we have been built to to delete or decay our information so it is difficult for human if it has not been rehearsed every now and then to remember those things into the brain so for example if your customer is not logging in for multiple days right he might have forgot the password he might forgot what email id he has used to log in there might be a lot of chances and it is bound to happen you should always take care of that by using something like this called forget password or forget email id or providing hints which i've shown you earlier in the slide right so it is a fact that humans are usually bad at remembering things so your design always should uh, support that okay nine okay nine and ten are very crucial it might blow up your mind so let's let's get started with this so nine p nine um, it is people makes most of the decision unconsciously you think that you are making a conscious decision but your conscious decision is taken by your unconscious mind <laughs> complicated right so what happened is uh i'll give you an example of a product for example okay so you are interacting with a product and uh, it was a good experience right you, you loved it and uh, and you close it for for some day you haven't bought or what you have not bought the subscription of that uh, product okay your sub you you have closed it you've closed the application and it's there in your mobile but you have you haven't used it for a longer time it doesn't mean that your brain is not thinking your unconscious mind is always thinking about it. Should I buy that subscription? What, what benefit should it give it to me? Your unconscious mind is continuously thinking about it, even if your conscious mind is not thinking. Okay. And suddenly, someday you will, you will go back to that application and you will buy the subscription. Why? Because your, your unconscious mind has already made a decision that you should buy that. And next time when you get interacted with the product, your conscious mind will buy it because your unconscious mind is telling your conscious mind to buy it. Okay. So every decision we make are, are greatly influenced by our subconscious mind. Amazing. This is psychology. Okay. <laughs> it's going, it is deep if you have to understand. Okay. So the last one, it is again, amazing. Okay. 
So first you talk, then you think. Every human being, we don't talk with our conscious mind. We never, we never do that. We talk, then our ears hear it, then our conscious mind um, start to decipher it, try to understand it, and then keep the rebuttals ready if somebody counter question us on whatever we're talking about. So whatever we're talking is via our subconscious mind. So we talk and then we think it is, you, you must have read this uh, brilliant quotes, right? Where people says, always think before you speak. <laughs> it doesn't happen that way. <laughs> you always talk and then you think. So your subconscious mind is very strong. As I said, you know, people make lots of their decisions, uh, you know, from their subconscious mind. Even in your application, you know, if you, if you, Don Norman, somebody has, um, you know, uh, given the name also. He talked about three levels of uh, delight, delightful customers. How do you delight customers? There are three levels, he said. I think visceral, then there's an experience, I think. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't remember the name now. But the third one was something related to um, um, the subconscious mind itself. Where do you store the experience? You know, it is in the subconscious mind. So the visceral part is the beauty of the application. You will first look at the beauty of it. Okay. Then you will look, you will experience it. You will use it. If it is better, if it is good, the experience is awesome. Then it goes to your brain. It goes to your uh, you know bigger storage where the subconscious mind start working. And that will be stored in the brain. And unknowingly, even if you your conscious mind doesn't like it, but your subconscious mind will tell you to start using that application. <laughs> it is huge, okay? So remember this. First you talk and then you think. This is how we have been built. Amazing psychology is amazing. Okay, so I am wrapping up here now. I will take up questions. Thank you so much for being with us today. Afif, what do we have today? Oh, wow. Uh, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Vikash. I mean, you know, it was a really great session. I mean, uh, it's, it's great to look at uh, certain design aspects from a human centric point of view, because many a times we are just so busy at looking at things, uh, you know, in a professional manner and looking at things as per the requirement that we tend to forget that, you know, at the end of the day, we are designing for humans. Exactly. So, yeah, I mean, that was a really uh, great insight as to how does psychology help for us to design better and possibly, you know, create a much better experience for everyone. So, yeah, I mean, I hope everyone uh, liked the session as much as I did. And uh, we have some questions ready with us as well. So everyone, uh, now we are heading towards the Q&A session. If you have any questions at all, now would be the right time to jot them down in the Q&A section so that I can ask them to Vikas on your behalf. So, all right, uh, let's start off with one question, which is very interesting. Uh, what are your thoughts on difference between human centric and user centric design? Oh, okay. Great. Yes. That's a brilliant question. I must say. Okay. Uh, so human centric design is uh, where you're keeping the human in the center of every process. Okay. Uh, whatever you're doing, you are keeping human in the center of it. Whereas in see user and human is same. Okay. It's this human being we're tackling with, but in HCD, we call it human centric design where we focus or we keep human at the center of every aspect. Whereas in user centric design, we keep the, uh, the interaction between the user and the computer in the center. We keep that interaction in the center of the user and mm -hmm. that does a difference. Nothing more, both, both are tackling the human needs. Uh, the only difference is human centric is keeping the human at the center of everything. Whereas in user centric design, it is the interaction between the user and the system. Okay. Oh. Sometimes happens so that we, uh, in the user centric design that we don't, um, you know, um, take every input from human, we do from our intuition and from our research also. That's a difference. That's it. But both are same. Makes sense. Uh, so, I mean, you know, these are two questions that are more about more uh, revolving around your background, you know, since you are uh, at a position, you know, where you are dealing with a lot of designers. 
तो अ कपल ऑफ पीपल आर आस्किंग हायरिंग रिलेटेड क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स टेक वन ऑफ देम विच इज माई क्वेश्चन इज दैट यू लुक what do you look for before hiring a design intern i mean the question could be like you know hiring a hiring a fresher in design or a beginner in design that would be a more uh, sensible question yeah. okay i think related to hiring whenever we 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 tend to hire somebody for the role we definitely don't look for all those big experiences what we look for is the guy or the person has uh, the caliber have have that um, designer hat or think about solving a real problem and then good knowledge about the foundations like right? you know the process or the key concepts you know of design we mm. are not practically thinking that a des- intern should come and start solving problems we are not at all looking at that what we look at is will you be able to learn do you have that passion with you right do you have that um, get going things for the for the users do you have the empathy how do you empathize with your with your maid at home how do you empathize with your security guard do you have that empathy that is what we look at mm, makes sense uh, all right so uh, pandya raja has a question is that uh, is user centric design based on target audience yeah yeah I mean. yeah exactly yeah so perfect i i i will elaborate a bit of that you have to do that otherwise you will be wasting a lot of time if you are not focusing on your target audience and you are doing some kind of testing with non your non target audience then you are wasting your time you first understand who are your target audience and then you should start designing from there mm-hmm. hope that will make sense yeah but uh, i mean uh, on that point like i have a question uh, let's say sometimes that uh, you are designing certain things and you are making your decisions based on human centric uh based on a human centric approach and uh, which is which could be a possibility that it's not very much related to the target users so how do you justify that you know maybe to your stakeholders or you know just presenting your work how do you justify that you know why is this to be done from a u- human centric approach okay so when we say human centric and keeping human at the center of it what we are saying is basically whatever a human should whatever a human is capable of doing that we have to take care of for example i given you an example of scrolling right mm-hmm. that generally a user will come down that's a psychology right he will scroll down you should think about this aspects of human that he will always the human will always come down and scroll or human will always look at that top navigation because they have the experience from that perspective you have to think about that that's a human qualities which you have to look for in your design and you always have to think from a user perspective that okay this is user humans will always do this i know about this because you know from psychology and all the research which we have done and user centric has to be there all right so uh, abhinav uh, asks a question that uh, can you please recommend some books to understand uh, psychology of behind design in a better manner they are they are so i am i am a book worm so i read lot of books if if you really have an interest in psychology then robert sternberg is the name okay he is the modern day uh, father of psychology he has lots of book but it is very academic by the way it is not like the book which we read on our daily basis it's very academic so you have to um, really have that um, <laughs> uh, you know reading those kind of books feel you sleepy <laughs> makes you sleepy <laughs> okay so robert sternberg is the name uh, you should check out his books he 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 writes amazing books mm. uh all right so uh, the next question is uh, so this attendee has majored in psychology in college and uh, wants to go to into ui ux design so how can i use psychology study as an advantage to get into design now wow amazing and uh, let me tell you i i dropped out um, as a psychology uh, m- masters in psychology <laughs> so i was not able to uh, really you know study that but yeah it's it's a biggest advantage if you're if you're from a psychology background you understand human that is clear first now now what you have to understand is how design process work how do we solve those as i told you right there are four factors which i have told you the the environment the human then we have the problems and then we find the solution so you are good with the two part right you have to be better with this process and then you have to get get started with the, the design frameworks which we have become master of it okay 
and then start applying for jobs and then uh, once you have that good frameworks idea or the, the things which is which has been taught in that framework i think you'll do great but yeah. one thing has to be very clear here uh, that people learn the design thinking process they said okay ideate um, sorry define ideate prototype test what i missed ideate prototype and test right they said okay yeah i know all this process but rarely people understand that what are the things comes under this right what do we do in define what do we really do in ideate what do we do in in prototype test right what do we do in test that has to be very clearly understand when you understand those parts you will become a great designer yeah i think that makes sense uh, all right so uh, tamjeet usman says that i am a ui ux designer and pursuing computer science should i pursue bachelor's in psychology no 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 not required so uh, you don't have to change uh, everything into psychology uh, you can read couple of books and you can you can have a good understanding about how human things how human do a lot of things right there are a lot of um, information available online as well as um, videos available you know books are available so read those books do not change the entire uh, study things which you are doing and cs is important for for design as well okay so I, as i have told you see uh, the the other lady who has a good advantage of psychology she will have less advantage of being a non computer background in ui ux you will have that advantage that you are from a computer science background right uh, all right so the next question is that what do researchers should know in particular uh, and in psychology when it comes to ux what does a researcher should know i think from from a psychology perspective you should you should know everything about psychology everything in the sense you should know this basic which i have taught you and then you should also learn about how people really think because see the most important part in in research it's taking interview it is not everybody's cup of tea you need to understand the other human you need to understand their emotion you need to understand how can i make him speak right because nobody will speak in front of you you need to you know dig dive into what he is saying and then you also have to understand the unsaid needs the unsaid requirements right he will come up with saying i need this feature i need this blue button to be red but you have to understand why he is saying it right so so um psychology yes you should understand you should also learn how to take interviews and for that perspective you should definitely understand psychology a bit better right uh all right so vishal asks a very interesting question uh that what do you think about social media comments as a source of design research i would require more context on this <laughs> <laughs> okay vishal so if you can uh, provide more context to this right now that would be really great perfect so uh let's take another question uh okay this is also a little hiring related is linkedin really a place for applying for ux design jobs as a total fresher i see over 200 applications in most of them what should be the approach and usually an entry level designer at least needs 2 years of experience in the jd so what are your thoughts on that those those jds which which ask for an 2 year of experience for an entry level people do not join those companies okay they doesn't have a, a good designer leads or leaders uh, who are publishing those jds so you will be in pain if you join those companies second thing is linkedin is a good source is a gold mine linkedin is a gold mine okay you have a lot of mentors there you have a lot of people who are sharing their knowledge you have me there okay i am very active in linkedin as well we i think a few have found me in linkedin as well so i am there and i i post a lot of uh, informative post and i also share some kind of you know we we have a good good connections uh, across industry so whenever they require some kind of uh, hiring as well i think today also i have posted some requirements uh, you know some of my colleague uh, wanted to hire senior ux designer so if you get connected with a lot of lot of people you get to know about a lot of things and then you can you know apply for jobs and get connected with them and uh, yeah so you you be interacted with uh, be in interaction with the person you know which which you are targeting for for example you are targeting a company where you should want you should want to join right then you should check out who all this people are right who are these people who are hiring from this company you know get connected with them uh, and then learn more about uh, those people and then like their whatever post they are making and you know just check out their post it's a gold mine you know i cannot stop talking about linkedin because i love linkedin a lot so just be there you know it's a gold mine 
Yeah, I agree to that. Uh, okay, so Vishal uh, circles back to us with his question around, you know, looking after social media comments. He says that, uh, you know, how people talk about problems in Quora or, you know, YouTube comment sections, people say, uh, speak about the oh. problems that they face. Yeah, 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 it is, it is. Now I'll tell you, it, it's a great source, by the way. If if there is a Quora quote or in Quora, somebody's bashing about a product, that's what you're saying. I think I'm relating to that. If somebody is bashing about product in Twitter or in Facebook or in uh, YouTube um, uh, communications or chat, then it is a good source uh, for you. But you have to very carefully understand whether um, whether those those are from bots or for people who really uh, you know doesn't want to contribute. So you have to very precisely understand or balance whether these are genuine or not. So if you if you understand it's a genuine thing, then that's a good source of uh, input for you. Right, makes sense. Uh, okay, so let's take one last question. Uh, Tamjeet asks that how does it how will HCI change after the arrival of metaverse? Oh, okay, interesting. Okay, good that you know you want to understand how the industry is evolving. Uh, see, HCI will always be there. It, it's never gonna change because we always have we always have the the human and the computer, even if metaverse, it's a computer. So what is HA? HA is the interaction between the human and the computer, right? So there is always a task. So it will remain the same. It, there is there is no change at all. The technolo technology part is getting evolved. The technology is getting uh, much better and better or, or more, uh, more open or more universal. The HA or the human things, we remains the same. We are not changing ourselves, right? So we are whatever we are. Things are getting changed around us. So humans remain the same, the computer is getting changed. So I don't think any changes is there. If you study HCI, you will be able to design for metaverse also. That's great. Uh, all right, so that's more or less about the questions. Uh, guys, if any of your questions were missed out, don't worry, you can reach out to us and we will be happy to ask Bikash on your behalf. Or I have also pasted a link to Bikash's LinkedIn uh, profile. You can go ahead, connect with him. He is very active on LinkedIn, let me tell you that. <laughs> He, uh, I mean, uh, at least for me, he was very active. Uh, he responded to me uh, very quickly. And yeah, from there, here we are speaking to all of you. So thanks a lot uh, for everyone who joined in. We just have a quick uh, quick uh, goodie to go, go ahead with. Uh, you can go ahead and check it out. And yeah, because coming back to you, thanks a lot uh, for conducting such a great session. It was really great to, again, you know, know everything that you had to share. And we hope to have you here again very soon. Awesome. Yeah, looking forward to it. And thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope I was able to give you some kind of learnings which will make you a better designer every day. Absolutely. So thanks a lot everyone for joining in as well. I hope all of you have a great weekend ahead. And yeah, don't stop learning. Yeah. All the best everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.